All right, now we turn to play, and we're going to be talking a lot about play. You'll get uh, play information for toddlers, preschoolers, middle childhood, adolescents, um, but we're going to start here. And I'm going to give you a little global information and then also focus in on play specifically for toddlers. So what is play exactly? Play is a pleasurable activity that's engaged in for its own sake, right? So I'm not going to pay a child to play. That doesn't count as play. Um, the child has to be internally motivated. So they're doing it because they get pleasure from it um, and for its own reward that doesn't have anything to do with the outside world, right? So we're not behaviorally reinforcming. We're not giving children um, M&Ms to play. We're not giving them money. Um, they're playing because it feels good. So that's the first thing to know about play. And play also contributes to the nervous system organization. So many uh, theorists and occupational therapists included would say that children's work is play, right? So a child is learning about the environment, they're organizing their nervous system, uh, they're experimenting with new skills and building additional skills, and um, when children are very young, like 12 months at the beginning of toddlerhood, play is very reality-based, so it's very functional. As they move through toddlerhood and into preschool years, play is going to become much more imaginative and pretend and symbolic and less attached to uh, objective reality, if you will. In understanding the taxonomies of play, what I recommend is that you consider two questions. One is, what is the child playing with, right? In other words, what are the toys, what are the, um, what are the resources, what are the materials? And the other is, who are they playing with? So, and um, we're gonna go over both of those right now. All right. So we're going to talk about uh, two different dimensions or aspects of play. The first is types of play, and uh, Parton in the 1930s developed this kind of categorization of play, and it has to do with what sort of social connection is inherent in the play. Uh, it starts with unoccupied play, which is something that babies do. It's pretty scattered, it's disorganized, um, but babies engage with stuff in their environment. They reach up and, and, they, and they reach for their um, mobile in their crib, or they shake a rattle, and that's considered um, play for babies. Then solitary play, which is the first stage that pertains to toddlers, happens from 18 months to four years. A child learns to be playful without social involvement. It's normal. It's not like they're super um, withdrawn or anything. It's a totally normal phase where they develop skills, they explore, and they prepare for play with others. Then from two to three years, there's onlooker play. And onlooker play is sitting back and kind of watching and sussing out a situation uh, where other kids might be playing, but not joining in. So children learn an enormous amount from observing other children and from modeling what they see. Onlooker play is a great example of how this happens. At two years and beyond, we have parallel play, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. The children are next to each other, but they're not interacting with each other. Oftentimes, they're doing the same activity. I'm playing with my truck over here, and um, Jose is playing with his truck over there, but we're not crashing our trucks together. We're each in a literally a parallel course of play. Um, and again, this is a typical phase, and children, just because they're not engaging with each other, um, are still observing each other, and they're still learning from each other. The next phase, which is at uh, over two years of age, is associative play. And it's a stage where children shift from being interested in uh, just things to being interested in other players. 
They engage with other children or adults during their activity or exploration. Now, it's not a large amount of activity or interaction, and it's not cooperative at this point. That comes next. But a child might be doing an activity that's related to the kids around him, um, like, for example, playing on the same piece of playground equipment and um, all doing different things, uh, engaging a little bit to climb around somebody, to uh, go under someone, to share a piece of equipment, but they're not cooperatively engaged. So associative play. And uh, solitary, onlooker, parallel, and associative are all associated with toddlers. The final phase is cooperative play, and that doesn't happen until middle childhood, so we'll be discussing it more later, but it's characterized by children actively working together during play. Um, the child plays with other kids because they have an interest in the same activity, and they also have an interest in the kid and in playing together. Now, you remember that um, that toddlers are pretty egocentric, right? So they're pretty much interested in themselves. So it makes sense that they're not going to be cooperatively playing yet because it's really all about me. Um, cooperative play may involve conflict, which is totally typical. Um, and kids during uh, cooperative play learn about sharing, turn-taking, negotiating control, and problem solving. So again, um, we will revisit this, but I wanted to give you a foundation of the types of play according to Parton uh, throughout the child's lifespan. All right, uh, this is the second half of, of play and what we're going to look at, and it's about play progression. These phases uh, were developed by the National Institute of Play and their types of play. So more to do with the kind than the person. We start with attunement play, and this establishes a social connection between the caregiver and the infant. So it's a type of play that toddlers are not really all that involved in, but it forms the foundation for later kinds of play. Then we have physical or body play, and that includes rough and tumble play, so um, crashing and rolling around and wrestling and um, jumping up and down and falling down, all of those sorts of things. Also fine motor practice, which helps develop uh, eye-hand coordination. So physical or body play has to do with the body. And um, that's the second type, and toddlers do participate in physical play. The third is object play, so any item that can be played with, uh, a child in the toddler phase will um, engage in, and it focuses on exploration, pre-academics, combining objects, so two or more things together, and it's sometimes called constructive play. It helps with imagination, with problem solving, with fine motor, and with self-efficacy. Next we have pretense or sociodramatic play. And sometimes this is um, known as pretend play. So it involves things like dress up, role playing, um, I'm gonna be the mom and you be the little sister and um, so-and-so is gonna be the dog, right? Uh, and it starts off as solitary and then it extends into more social. Toddlers, um, engage in this a little bit. It's more of a preschool aged um, skill, but they're starting to engage in this sometimes when they're around three. Then, um, again, you know, just to give you the full impact of kind of what happens during play, um, we have symbolic or imaginative play, and this emerges late in the preschool years. Uh, it's play with language. So kids are expressing ideas, feelings, and experiences. They can do this with painting and drawing. They can do it with music. They can do it with drama, a lot of different ways. And again, not toddlerhood, but late preschool. So around uh, four and a half, five. Finally, we have games with rules, and that's the last type of uh, category of play within this progression. Games with rules, kind of obvious. Um, it's the final form of play. It begins in preschool and then continues throughout life, and it includes things like board games, um, electronic media, 
sports and organized group activity. So it has to do with, um, with cognition, with motor involvement, and with play all and socialization all kind of put together. Uh, so more sophisticated than the average toddler can handle, but it is the culmination of the play progression. Toddlers participate in physical, object, and beginning pretense play. All right, so that was a lot of information. Good job sticking through it. Um, toddlers are complex beings, and uh, so I just want to give you a little summary of what we've talked about and the things that you want to keep in mind. So there's rapid growth in multiple domains for toddlers. There are a lot of, there's a lot of motor refinement, both gross motor, postural, fine motor, um, oral motor, ocular motor, motor defilement, refinement across the board. There's an emphasis on social engagement and communication, and development may be uneven across domains, and that is totally typical. So some kids might be um, surging ahead in, um, in locomotion, but they're not talking very much. Another kid may be um, coming up with all sorts of uh, cognitive advances, um, and they're tripping over their own two feet. So all of that is, is very typical and to be expected in toddlerhood, as well as the other areas of childhood development. I love this quote, the fundamental job of a toddler is to rule the universe, Lawrence Kuttner, and that about sums up the toddler. Okay, so starting uh, with um, this lecture, I'm gonna be providing you with a bunch of resources to help you out and to broaden your knowledge. They're optional resources, but I do suggest that you look at them uh, to give yourself a better idea of what's going on with the individual at a particular stage of development. So we'll go through this super quick. There's videos from Help Me Grow, and they're on typical development, and you can see children of a year, 18 months, two years, and three years. There's milestone resources from pathways.org, which is a great website. Also in O'Brien and Kuhanic, these will be uploaded for you, but they are also in the Occupational Therapy with Children and Adolescents textbook. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has a lovely set of web pages that give you a lot of information as well as short videos and photos of toddler development. So check those out. And then when we get together in class, uh, in virtual class, uh, we're gonna be doing some toddler observation. And so we're gonna watch videos of toddlers and look at analyzing their um, behavior and their activity. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon.